Have you got your pen and paper out? Guys, it's Monday and you're on the winner circle and there's more than just money movement channel. And the best way to capture information is to write it down. It's one thing to listen to an inspiring message, but it's another to remember what that message said. So if you don't have a pen and paper with you, please grab it. I am sitting here with Mr. Persisingo. He's got a master's in engineering, actually. Oh, yes, yes. He's <laughs> got a master's in engineering, <laughs> but he's been doing amazing things in the property industry, you know, and one of the, the, he's one of the people that understand personal finance. And I, I want to tap into his brains for your benefit, you know, just to ask him as many questions as you can. Welcome. No, thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you for so honoring us with your presence. No, you, you called me. He said, he said, what must I wear with this? I'm like, are you? Put in a suit. And I see honored that the dress code. Thank you so much, my brother. No, thank you know, so people much. always thank look so at much. people that are doing things that are out of the ordinary. Yes. Uh, I mean, you are able to save a million when, <laughs> from zero. You're able to save a million. Right? They look at people yes. that do that, yes, and and they see the glory and yes. they wanna be those people or wanna do the things that those people are doing, yes. But they forget that with each glory, yes. there's a story, yes. You know, and I just want you to take us through mm. what what your story is, okay. uh, because. I mean, I don't know. I know you didn't <laughs> grow up as a cheese boy. I don't remember yes, when you yes, say yes. you've inherited everything that yes. you have. Uh, it seems okay. to me that you yes. started literally from scratch and yes. built your life up. Yes. Okay. Uh, like you said, my name is Pesa Singh. I grew up in Venda there. And then I grew up from a single parent. So it was more like a single parent. And then immediately after my father passed away because he was the one who was providing for the family. She had to look for a job and then she ended up working in a church uh, where she was a cleaner in the church. She was cleaning like Monday to Saturday. It was more like she was at work every day because Monday to Saturday she was cleaning. And then on a Sunday, there was a tuck shop in the church. She was selling in the in the tuck shop. So when I was growing up, even people, they used to call me PC when I would join the tech shop. It was more like PC the son of Miss Joyce from Tuck Shop. That's how people knew me in, in the area there. And then when I was growing up, I went and studied uh, civil engineering. Uh, fortunately, I got a lot of bazaar because I was, I was really putting on the, the effort, which I went and, and studied civil engineering at VUT, where I did my diploma, and then I graduated, then I went and did BTEC. When I have a BTEC, I wrote a proposal to vets to say, I don't have honors but I want to come and do masters because I have this number of experiences, which is this something that you can do. And then they agreed to say, I must come and do the masters. Then I went and do the masters for two years. Then I graduated masters. And then I work for municipality as a civil engineer, but on the side, I'm doing a number of things, including property investment. Yeah. But where did you start? What was your first job? Uh, my first job was in 2010. It was in 2010 there. I was just in in-service training where uh, I was in MLO doing a roads construction. Uh, that's where everything started. In terms you had graduated now with your BTEC? Not yet. I, I didn't have a diploma. It's like after you go to a uh, class for two years, you have to do in-service training for a year. Then after that year, that's when you graduate. So it was just that it was what more like do as comsem yes those ones for for us it's an internship or in service training just for one year and then they don't really pay you a lot cuz those days uh, I was earning 6000 yeah in 2010 in 2010. I don't know what <laughs> 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 yeah so that's where everything started the way uh, I was just earning 6000 and then I decided to say no let me save 3000 every month then I started saving 3000 every month and then after a year when my in service training ended I had something like 36000 and then fortunately, I didn't even have a gap between my in-service training and a job. I already got a job in Pretoria where they were like, hey, you can come here and then you'll earn 10,000. And then I was earning 10,000 every month. I decided again to say, let me save 5,000. Although it was never my plan to say, go and save half 
your salary. For some reason, it was just depending that way that I ended up saving half the, the salary that I was getting. What so, are you eating, man? Uh, <laughs> like you said, uh, uh, 10,000 in 2010, it's not the same as 10,000 now. So it was more like enough. And then we used to buy food with a friend. Like it was more like we contribute together and then we buy this food. Because I remember during my in-service training, I think I was paying something like 1,250 on accommodation. So that. the rental. So yeah, mm. things were more affordable than in Pumalang. And then I saved that 5,000 for a year. After a year, I had 60,000 plus that 36,000 from in service training. So just on my... You're not sending any money home? Eh, no, 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 no. I was not sending. Which is good because for some reason, my mother, eh, the church started as a school, like a, a normal school in, in the church. Because it's a big church. It's this big church. They started a school there and then they made a a teacher in the school. When they made a teacher, she, she fell in love with being a teacher. Then she went to University of Venda and then she studied teaching. Right. And then after that, because she was uh, using that bazaar called Funza Rushaka, they said, no, she cannot continue working in a private school. She has to go to a public school. Then she moved. In 2010, when I was studying to work, she was also studying to work as a teacher in a public school so there was no need for me because i'm earning six thousand maybe she's earning fifteen thousand there so there was no need for me to send money to her so it was more like it's just my money and i'm the younger one at home so it was more like this is you're the last man. born yes okay i'm the last born yes so that's how it was and then we just you also tell somebody something to say you are not late to start for example for my mother she started very late i think she started being a teacher at 45. And I feel like a lot of people, That's they, they end up writing themselves off to say, I'm too old to start this. And then I feel like every time it's it's tea time, you can start uh, being a teacher so late and then your life will be so good in such a way that when you look at my mother now, you wouldn't say she was a cleaner before because she has all these things that other people are having. That's quite interesting. When you say, when you look at it now, it's going to be, it's as if, She's never been a teacher before because that speaks to us always saying, yes, you, you, you don't have to look like where you come from. Yes. Or when God starts to bless you, yes. it will be as if you never left any yes. all your yes. life. Yes. So that must have been a great advantage on your side because now you didn't have to say, because I always wonder yes. when you say <laughs> you saved half your salary, I'm like, but your mother was a cleaner. <laughs> when you're not taking care of her, when you're not sending any money home, yes. then yes. it makes sense. Yes. So, and then you moved to Pretoria and you were saving Yes, half. I was saving 5,000 every month. And then at the end of the year, I had 60,000 plus the 36,000. Then I saved again just for a few years. But it was something which was good. The company was giving me a company car to say, you are on site. This is a company car you must use. Is that the Pretoria? Uh, branch, the no? Pretoria branch. It was a very big global company, which is doing so well. It's, it's, it's one of those well-known civil engineering firm. So they were giving me cars. Every week I had different car. Like every Monday I was returning a car and taking a new car. It's like they were using those budget insurance and uh, EVs and so on. So they were hiring a car every week for me for work. And then, so I didn't need a car at that moment. So I was more like just saving and saving and saving. So I saved until that money reached 120,000. Then that's when I said, no, let me buy my car. And uh, that car, it's, it's more like it was just picking in my place because I bought it and then I was not really using it because I was still using the, the company car. Then it continued where I was just saving and saving. And then 2015, I had something like 100,000. And then I felt like now I'm tired of renting because for me, I feel like renting is sending somebody to say, go and uh, buy yourself a, a house. Then they go and buy a house. Then you volunteer to say, I'm going to pay uh, for your house. It's more like you are paying somebody's debt. And then at the end of 20 years, you don't own anything and this house belongs to that person and they have a right to even move you out. So I felt like I'm tired of renting. I need something which is my own. So 2015, that's when I went and bought my first house. And then you still is the Pretoria? No, no, no. I'd moved to Jobek now. I'd moved to a company in Jobek. And that company was a very good story because when I went to them, they just called me to say, come for an interview. I didn't apply for, for that position. They called me because they know me from another project when I was still doing in service training. 
So they just called me to say, come for an interview. I went there. And then they're like, how much do you earn? I'm like, I'm earning 10,000. They're like, which qualification do you have now? I'm like, I'm even B-Tech in civil engineering. They're like, no, a person with a B-Tech cannot earn 10,000. We will give you more than double your salary. So immediately I went and resigned from that other job. <laughs> <laughs> I, I moved to Jobek. And then in Jobek, that's when I was earning something like 32,000. So in 20, from 10 to 32, from 10, I jumped to 32,000. That was 2014. So 2015, when I bought a house, I was already earning 32,000. Then I bought a house for 522,000. And then when I was just sitting in the garden, I'm like, no, uh, I'm so not she, staying in that house. I was staying in the house. It was sure. my residential house. I'm like, no, I, I'm not used to having debts. I want to pay off these debts as soon as possible. And uh, that's when I decided to say, let me save 15,000 for three years. And then I went forward and saved 15,000 from 2015 to 2018. Because the 100,000 that I had in 2015, I had used it all in making that house into something comfortable. More like doing the paving, more like doing cupboards and, and all, uh, all those things. Yes. Yeah. So, so uh, I don't know, you're on your own, there was no woman to help. <laughs> <laughs> no, then I was doing everything alone. I was <laughs> so I did everything. Then I saved that 15,000 from 2015 to 2018. At 2018, I had 520,000, which I took and I went to the bank to say, I need the settlement amount. And then I was so shocked that... Uh, the settlement amount was 512000 So I bought this house for 522000 When I'm looking for settlement amount after three years, it's 512000 Which means I only paid 10000 of the actual amount from the, from the house. It only dropped by 10000 And when I checked, how much was I paying every month? I was paying 5850 but that includes uh, insurance. So I was paying 5850 times 12, times three years, which is 210,000, which means the 10,000 the, the 10, went to the actual house and then the 200,000 went to the uh, interest plus the insurance, just the legal insurance. Yes. So that's when I started to be worried to say, uh, uh, I must start looking for ways of how to pay off things as soon as possible. If I buy something, let me look for ways in which I can settle this thing as soon as possible. And one of the ways is just to put extra on the, on the debt that you have. If you put extra on the debt, uh, you can be able to damage those interests that is there. It's more like I did some calculation with the calculator just to say if I buy 100 a house for 500,000 and then I just add 1,000. Instead of paying 5,000, I add 1,000. How many years can I save myself? And I realize it's like something like you can finish that house in 12 years, six months, which means you would have saved yourself a lot of time and a lot of money. So it's important to just put an extra amount if you have a debt. It doesn't matter if it's 300, if it's 500, it will really damage the interest. So that's when I, I was like, no, now I'm I'm done paying off this house. And can the same be applied to cars? But you just said yes, yes, it, it it works everywhere. It can be applied to cars. It can be applied to phones. Uh, when the bank says you must pay three thousand, it doesn't necessarily mean you must pay three thousand. Mm. You can go and decide to add more. You can even do it through EFT and just send more on on, on the on the debt. And then that's when you'll finish the, the debt as soon as possible without incurring the highest interest. So after that, I had paid up my house and then my, my car, I, I, I bought it cash. So it was more like I don't have a debt. And instead of saving 15000 from 2018, I decided to save 20000 So from 2018 to 2020, I was saving 20000 every month. And then when it reached 2020, I had 460,000. And then it was during the time of COVID now. And then I decided to say, what can I do with this money? Because I felt like just putting it in the bank, it's not really working for my best. Because if you put something like 100,000 in the bank, uh, you can get something like 600 per month on interest. So I was like, no, let me move this money somewhere 
into something that will generate money. And then when I look around, I saw a lot of things which have got a lot of risk. I'm like, no, I'm not going for this. I'm not going for this. And then I felt like property was the best thing for me to put my money. And it was easy for me to qualify for those houses because during the the, 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 the COVID, the interest was high. So I was more like just buying houses and buying houses and buying houses. So I think 2020, I bought two and 2021, I bought two. And then when I buy those houses, I made sure that I don't just buy a house. I go and build more things on those houses so that if anything happens, I have that room. Even when the interest rates went up, I, I had a lot of people complaining to say the interest is high, the interest is high. But because I had already uh, put more rooms on those cottages, houses, cottage, yeah, bachelors, it was more like I'm not really feeling the pressure because there's a lot of money coming, which I'm able to save the debt. So there's, there's one question I want to ask you about the mindset that it takes to actually be pro saving. Right, because you started off young, but yet this mindset that you're gonna save half your salary. I think you're the only person I know that has mm. ever done that. I don't know even if if my own mother was able to do that. Mm. For you, mm. what got you to that mind? What do you think got you to that mindset? I think it's the church. I think it's the church because I was going to church a lot, and then my mother was just taking me along to say she's going to work. Let me take him because he's the younger child. But when I was there, I was listening to what they are saying. And then I heard, of, I heard them talking about finances. So that's where the interest started to say, uh, let me do this. So by the time I started working, I already had the information. I was just waiting for a salary so that I can start using the salary. What are some of the things they said? Like in yes. church, what did they say that yeah. triggered the thing? One that I said, if you don't say, go to <laughs> one that I remember is where the pastor was saying, uh, people in the world, when they look at Christians, they think Christians are losing money in the church, like the church is taking people's money, mm. like uh, these people that don't have money because. The, the church, church is from taking from them. But the pastor was saying, most of these people, when they come to church, they are already coming without money. It's like it's people who can't manage their own finances. They come to church without money, and it looks like the church is taking money from them. But I remember one day the pastor was like, uh, uh, he was just talking in a, in a church. He was like, uh, how many people have 100,000 here? Ne? And then that thing disturbed me to notice that most people, they don't have that 100,000, just 100,000 in your account. They were just saying, who has 100,000 here? Just to show you that people really don't have money. But if I have 100,000, <laughs> why would I tell you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the Maybe they were like, ah, yeah. Then, hey, for me, the it was more like, I don't want to be like this. I want to be having that 100,000. It shouldn't be a big issue for me Wait, to have that 100,000. If you had it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going <laughs> to. <laughs> so it's, it's some of those things that I was, I was learning. So it, it made me to be interested in the financial literacy as a whole. And then I started implementing it in the early ages. But to some of those things, it was more like, uh, just to make sure that I live a life uh, below my means. I feel like for me, most of my time, I was not living just within. I was really below my means. It was more like my life, I, I could afford a lot of things with 32,000, but I decided to say, no, I'm... I'm In 2014, going. you'd be yes, boiling, yes. you'd be driving an S3 <laughs> if you wanted. Yes, but I decided to live way below my means, but I had a goal to say, I want to see myself achieving one, two, three. So that's why I'm doing this. So it was more like, I'm not going to be sacrificing the way I'm sacrificing for the rest of my life. It's just something that I'm going to do it. And then I will reach a specific goal. Then I will be able to enjoy myself in the way that I want to, to enjoy myself. You know, the way the church influences us, ne? Yes. I, I ended up getting married 
It seemed you didn't grow up with a father figure, right? Yes. But you had your mother. Yes. So where did your biggest influence come from apart from church? Yes. Especially for the positive things that were happening. Yeah. I would say the church played the 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 the, the major role. And then some of the things, it was just me encouraging myself. Because I remember when I was growing up, I was that child who I even walked around with a small Bible. You see those small Bibles? The blue ones. Yes. <laughs> I had it in the pocket. I was that child who was busy encouraging myself. And I've never looked at myself and say, you are poor. I've Were always, you poor? Yes. Uh, when I'm looking at well, the situation now, and I'm looking at my mother being a cleaner and the amount she was getting, uh, it, it, it was not enough to, to do a lot of things. So... We were poor, but it's like it was covered over uh, the, the environment where I was. Even the church was also helping because I remember most of the people in the church coming to our home to help, to wow. sing this. I, I remember uh, one lady coming to our house and then they say, she's here, you must come. When I come, she had clothes to say, we are here to bless you with clothes. Some of those things, they, they were covering all that in such a way that I never looked at myself and say I'm poor. I always had the positive mindset to say in the future something will happen and then things will turn up uh, right. Mm. Okay. And then when you got your your last job that allowed you to then start buying the properties yes, and, and you started to rent them out, yes. what were some of the challenges you experienced? Yes. I think, uh, the, especially, I mean, I don't, yes. you were in civil. Yes. Maybe that was an advantage because then it allows you to build structures and all of that. You're an yes. engineer. Yes. But were there challenges that you experienced that you can think of? Yeah. I think the challenges were very few because when I started to buy property for rental purposes, I was saving like something like 460000 in my savings. So it was more like an injection to for me to start. So it became a very smooth transaction. Even my first project, I think I did it in two months. It was just a quick project because I had the money. It was just a matter of just doing the project. So the challenges, it was just few things like uh, you find where you are building and then they are cutting the services, such things. It was not like external. It was more like internal challenges. But cut the services for what? No, no, no. You uh, remember the first house that I was building for rental uh, purposes, I was staying inside. So it was those things that you'll come back from work and you find you don't have electricity. The guys were busy building. They cut their service for you by mistake, something like that. It was not like mm -hmm. all those deep challenges which I can think about because I feel like if you have, you have money, you'll be able to do those projects easily. Do you think you've lived a life without challenge? Ah, uh, no, no, no. Because no. somebody could be listening <laughs> and be saying, ah, but this guy, it's like everything flowed. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think the challenges were there. It's just the way I look at them. Yeah, I think it's about the way I look at challenges because they say uh, how you respond to a challenge is based on how you look at it. If you look at it, somebody can be put in my shoes and then they will say, if I'm having a mother who's a cleaner, uh, I won't go to university, for example. Then they don't even apply to go to university. But for me, I, I was not thinking about the challenges that I was having. I was thinking mainly about where I want to go. So I've always been that person that is thinking about tomorrow to say, I want to achieve one, two, three. Even now when I'm sitting here, I have the next goal to say, I want to achieve one, two, three. And then when I receive money, even now, I'm thinking about that goal to say, let me save some for the goal that I have for next day. How, how, how do you do like goal setting? 
I mean, for someone who's listening and saying, you talk a lot about the next goal and the next goal and the next goal. Yes. How, how do you do your goal setting yes. and and put the effort to actually achieve those goals? Okay. Yes, I feel like even the goal itself, the goal itself become the reason that I am the discipline the way I am. Because I'll be just sitting and say, no, I want to start maybe a rental business. Okay, and then I have to calculate to say, what do I need to achieve this goal? Then I realize, no, I need 500,000, which means now I must start saving towards that 500,000. So whatever money I receive, in my mind, it's more like, let me make sure that the goal happens. So before I use this money, it's the reason why from the time I started saving in 2010 to today, I don't remember a day where I ate the rest of the salary and I didn't save for something because there's always a goal that I need to save for. So when I receive money, it's more like, let me take a portion of this money and make sure that it goes to my goal. And then uh, that's why I'm able to achieve those goals because I sacrifice a lot for that goal. And then uh, the other thing is just the issue of pressure to say, I've always been that person who's not really influenced by the pressure of the society to say somebody I studied with is driving a Mercedes-Benz today, then I must go and buy a Mercedes-Benz. I don't even look at what people are doing in that way. It's more like for me, I focus on my goal to say, I want to achieve these goals. So if I need to drive a polo for me to achieve this goal, then let it be so because I have this goal, which is uh, I'm focused at it. So I, I think the issue of pressure of, because there's two pressures. There's a pressure that you get from people to say, and uh, these people, you, you were with them all this life. And then they are now looking like they are more ahead of you. And then you want to be like them. And then those are the goals that you must, those are the challenges that you must overcome. Even those challenges where it's more like a challenge that you give to yourself to say, my mother was a cleaner for 15 years. And then because she was a cleaner for 15 years and now I have masters in civil engineering and I'm working for municipality. Let me show people that I have made it now. Arrived now, I must yes. build a big house <laughs> and we are from there. Then the house must show. <laughs> so all those things. And unfortunately... And you never did? Uh, eh? You never wanted to do that? To to to, to say, okay, yes. my mother was a cleaner, we suffered. Yes. Now I'm in no, 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 no. engineering graduate. <laughs> I'm going to build a big house. <laughs> no, 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 I've never been uh, influenced by that. I feel like uh, for me, it has always been about what I want. And then I've realized that most of those things that you, if you say, I want to show people that I've made it, the things that you must buy, it's usually liabilities. It's things which are not making money for you because it's more like a car. Those are the things that people will see that Pacey has made it. And then it's more like things like clothes. So that's when people will see where well, if Pacey is wearing this brand, it means he has made it. So I've never been that person. I've always keep it to myself and do what I want to do. And then most of the things that I'm doing, it's more like property. You cannot go with them to a event and show people that I have these properties. It's more like shares. Shares, you cannot go with them and show your profile to say, this is what I have in shares. So most of the things that I'm doing, you cannot see them. Uh, it's only late when I started sharing about them that people started to know that I'm doing one, two, three. What was your reason for sharing? The reason for sharing, it was actually a friend. I, I was more like talking to a friend and telling him I'm paying off the house, I'm doing this. And then he was like, no, this is very inspiring. Uh, you must start sharing this. That's when I started with social media and then I started sharing and then I could see the response of people and so on. That's where it all started. And then when when you look at um, your journey, right, are the things that you look at and feel like you could have done differently? When I was still just a homeowner, uh, I was afraid of debt. I just wanted to live a debt-free life. And then that was my focus. So if I get money, I just wanted to settle debts and make sure that my life doesn't have debts. I'm living a life without debts. But when I started to move into property investing, I realized that it is better to use somebody's money to make money. As long as the debt that I'm taking, I'm not going to be the one to pay for that debt. It's more like when I'm taking a debt for, 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 for business, I'm saying who is going to be the one to save us 
this debt. And then uh, it's, it's unfortunate to say it's usually tenants who are servicing my debts because I've taken debts to build this property business and then I'm not the one who's servicing it. And then uh, it's being serviced. And then after being serviced, I still remain with profit. So, but in I any can, case, you are building for them, Mus. Yes, uh, they're yes. the ones using <laughs> it. It's not like you are the ones staying in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good one. And then uh, the other thing I will say: if now you give me five hundred thousand, you say, uh, "What are you going to do with this five hundred thousand? Are you going to pay off one of your houses, or are you going to invest it?" I will choose to invest it because if I pay off five hundred thousand for a house, I just save myself from paying five thousand. But if I invest 500000 in the business that I'm running, I charge 3500 per budget. Mm. And then it takes me 100000 to make one budget, which is fully fitted with shower, kitchen, and everything. So you can have five. Everything. So I can have five, three thousand, three, three thousand, more than 16000 uh, that that I will be making by that 500000 So it, it, it's choosing now to say, do I want to save myself from paying 5000 or do I want to start a business that is going to generate 16000 And then when I get the 16000 I can be able to pay that 5000 and I still remain with 11000 in my end. So it's better for me to invest it rather than to, 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 to settle a debt. So to answer the question, I will say in the beginning, I was afraid of debts, but now I'm using debts uh, to, 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 to build the portfolio. Mm. And then when you say when you say portfolio for someone who's listening and doesn't know what a portfolio is, can yes. you explain to them what a portfolio <laughs> is? Yeah, it's a difficult one to say because one will say uh, it goes to that issue of saying it's it's one house a portfolio. <laughs> okay. It, yeah. it's, or or do you need to have number of properties to say I've got portfolio of properties? So uh, the way I look at it, it's more like uh, uh, it's just the number of houses that you are having and then which are not just primarily for residential, it's uh, other for businesses. So that's the portfolio that I was talking about to say to have number of properties. So for example, for me, I don't count the house that I have. I never count the house. I always count the bachelors that I have to say I have this number of bachelors because Bachelors are making money for me more than the house. If I just buy a two-bedroom house, I'm just going to get 5000 from that house. But if I buy that house and then I build bachelors, those bachelors are the one that is making money for me. So I feel like if somebody buys a house and say, I bought a house, now a two-bedroom house, and then they just hold on to it, they might complain to say the house is not making money because you haven't use that stand to its full potential. It's more like you have this stand and then you have this house. And then the money that you are getting from rent might even be lower than the money that you are supposed to pay the bank plus all those other things like uh, rates and levers. So you can end up saying property business is not a good business because you are just holding on to this one house. Although there is a benefit of capital growth to say um, the, the, the value of the property is increasing. But for me, I felt like I always want both. I want capital growth and then I want a rental income at the end of the month. I don't just want to, to hold on to, to, to a house that is not making money. So most of my houses, I make sure that I capitalize and make sure that they make money. I have one house that makes around 40500 just one house. And then you find already the it, things that I'm paying, the expenses for that house is something like 10000 which means 30000 it's helping me to go and build another one in the future. Mm. What, what do you think is the mindset that is holding people back, especially employees, from pursuing their goals? I think it's fear. There's a lot of people who are afraid, like, uh, uh, and you are afraid of something that you don't know. It's more like you are afraid of something you don't know. And that brings me to more like the Bible, because I remember there's a story in the Bible where there were guys with leprosy. And then those guys, they were like, if we sit here, we are going to die. But if we go forward, there is a chance of us being alive or being, yeah, there's a chance of us being alive. So it's more like that people are just sitting and then they are not doing anything. And which says people must start something. For you to have a chance to see that something might work out, 
it needs you to start. So most people are not starting. And there's a lot of people with good uh, business ideas. I mean, I talk to a lot of people and I hear, oh, these business ideas are good. And then you find, oh, this person has the business idea, but they're not starting. So I feel like we need to start. And then when you start, you must not look at somebody else to say, what are they doing? Because if you look at somebody else, you might end up making yourself not to be productive. Because if you look at somebody who's building 12 bachelors and you say, I want to build 12 bachelors as well, you might be surprised what that person is using. For example, for me, who uses 100,000 to build one bachelor, that person is using 1.2 million. And then for you, 1.2 million is a lot of money. You cannot be able to do it. Then you stop without even studying. So you have to look at yourself to say, where can I start and how can I start? Because it won't be the same as the way I started because I started with saving. For somebody else, it might be just to start with one bachelor and say, this is one bachelor that I've started with. And then over time, when I'm receiving the income and I make sure that I'm not eating uh, the income, I'm, I'm managing it well, and then I'm saving it so that I can use the same money to grow the portfolio. With, within time, you'll be able to build two. Within time, you'll be able to build five. So I feel like a lot of people want to start fancy. And then that's the problem why they're not starting. Mm, okay. And, and what would you say to someone who says, I want to start? But I don't know where to start. Yes. yes, I earn some salary, but I actually don't know where to start. Yes. I think the right place is also your, your platform. They, they should invest in going to seminars and, and making sure that you get information. Because you can have money, but if you don't have information, you can lose this money. So it's very important that you get information first before you invest. That's why they say don't invest in something that you don't understand. It's important to go to the background checks and make sure that you understand. If you're going to do go for shares, make sure that you spend some time in that dummy account learning how it works so that by the time you do it, you already have the knowledge. So I feel like uh, somebody who wants to start, I will say go and look for knowledge and look for seminars that are being hosted with regards to what you want to do. And you've written a book. About yes. that as well. I like the fact that you're touching on that. What's the book yes. about? <laughs> yes, the book covers a lot of things. The book covers a lot of things because uh, it covers uh, saving, uh, which is just telling people to say we must be disciplined and make sure that we sacrifice, especially if somebody is starting to work. That's when they make a lot of mistakes. People who make mistakes, they make mistakes just on your first job, then you make mistakes that are, is going to cost you for so many years. So those are the most critical time where you need to save your money and make sure that you sacrifice the most. So that after five years, for example, you will be in an advantage. Even if you are living and going to decide to buy an expensive car, you will have already invested in some of the things which you are going to be the one to pay for what you want. For example, for... Somebody like me, I talk a lot about interest from the bank. And then at the moment, I think uh, in one account, I'm receiving 1,700 on interest from the bank. So for somebody who's receiving this interest, that's the right time to say, if I want to upgrade my life, let me use this 1,500 to buy an iPhone because this 1,700 from interest can buy for that for so what is happening with a lot of people is that they are using their salary to pay for that iphone and then you end up using your salary in a lot of things and then your salary is becoming weaker and weaker in such a way that you are not able to invest when somebody comes and say eh, i'm saving thirty thousand, for example you feel like it's impossible this story is not true where else they are doing How many it people have called you a liar? <laughs> <laughs> a lot. But for the, the, the good thing about me is that I have screenshots for everything that I was doing from 2010 to now. I have all the screenshots. So when I save 520,000, I have a screenshot. When I paid off uh, my house, I have a screenshot. I, so I have screenshots for for everything. It's like God knew that in the future I'm going to be talking to people and people want to believe where you really did this, then I will need to show them some evidence at times. Mm -hmm. So they, 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 they use those issues. So 
that are happening. So I feel like in the beginning of their career, people must sacrifice the most and make sure that they, they save their money. And then the book also talks about investing to say, don't just save. Yes, it's good to save. And then the bank is a safe place to save your money. But let it not be your dream to say, I'm saving as a form of investment. Because the returns that you are going to get will be so less. You must find an investment that will generate uh, real amounts. And then for me, it's property. So when I talk about property, for somebody else, it may not be property. It might be a saloon. You need to save so that you can start your saloon business. You need to save so that you can start your itari. So when I say property, for somebody else, it might be something different. But we are just saying save, but know when to turn your saving into a form of investment. And then uh, it talks a lot about different kinds of investments. And then uh, the book also covers a uh, credit score, which uh, is a very sensitive topic because a lot of people are having a bad credit score. And then it's, it's, uh, it's not easy to rebuild your credit score, although it's possible. Uh, so it's very important for somebody to protect their own credit score to make sure that it's a personal thing to protect your credit score because uh, i remember in the past there was somebody who wanted to buy a car and then they came to me and say uh, can i use your pay slip to buy yeah. a car something like that even people in relationship these days especially ladies they are doing a lot of things for guys uh, using their pay slip and then you end up uh, with a debt and then you have separated with this person. <laughs> <laughs> you have this debt and then this person is not willing to even pay for that debt anymore. So there are those issues. So you must make sure that a credit score become personal. It, it should be your own action that must build or uh, rebuild it. So that, that must build or destroy it. It must not be somebody else coming in to control your credit score. So make it personal. And then make sure that your responsibility to, to protect it. And then I also talked a lot about debts to say there's a lot of different debts, uh, which one is good and which one people should avoid. And then I talked about ways of buying a car to say when you are buying a car, which way is cheaper when you are buying a car? Because there's a lot of ways of buying a car. And then I realized that the cheapest way of buying a car is uh, through buying in cash. That's the cheapest way. I'm the not... cheapest way to buy a car is to buy in cash. <laughs> That's, the <laughs> <laughs> That's the cheapest way. Although I'm not saying is the a way that I'm advising people to go with. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's the one that you save money in. And then the one which people like, which is this one with the balloon, is the most expensive way to buy a car it's even more expensive than going to the bay to the to the car finance without anything you just go empty-handed and then you say i need a car it's much better than you get a car without deposit without balloon then you just pay the normal amount it's even better than the balloon so the balloon is like you end up paying more money than without the balloon although if you are into business, you can ask me to say, if you have 500,000, will you take the 500,000 and buy a car cash? I will say, no, I'm not going to pay, buy a car cash. I'm going to take a loan and then I pay 4,000 for a car. And then I take the 500,000, I invested, it makes 16,000. Then I need to just take that 4,000 and pay for my car and I still remain with profit. So I was just comparing different ways so that people know what is happening. Because some people, they don't know. Somebody will end up uh, saying things like uh, at the end of the loan, when they are supposed to be paying the balloon, they didn't know that they are supposed to pay the balloon. Mm. And then you are already there at the end. So I was just educating people that when you are taking a debt, you must know what kind of debt and the condition of the debt. And then I also talk about ladies. I talk to ladies to say, at uh, this one, when I wrote the book, I thought it's going to be very sensitive and it will make a lot of ladies to be very angry. But for some reason, that's the chapter which most ladies, when they contact me, they're saying, I like that chapter. I felt like you were talking to me. Because uh, I was talking to the ladies to say they must work for themselves. I mean, it will be good 
to hear that a lady from Venda is the first lady to be the one who's a mechanic for a certain airport or or something like that. So we want. I, I, when I was writing that chapter, I just wanted lady to be innovative and then not to rely fully on us because it ended up being that thing where a lady is it's, it's relying fully on a relationship in such a way that that relationship is not just a relationship, it's a form of income. So when it's a form of income, you hold on to it because even if your boss treats you bad, you don't just leave. You, you, because it's a form of income. Even if they talk to you in a wrong way, you just go and complain to your friends and you come back to work. So it's more like that even in relationships. If you are in a bad relationship and then they are really abusing you, but this relationship is a form of income, you will hold on to it even when it doesn't serve you right. So I was more like saying women should build up themselves in a way that a, when a relationship doesn't serve you right, you are able to walk away and then you are able to eat uh, after that relationship. And then I also talked to guys to say, uh, I think as a guy, you must not be a lazy guy who wakes up at 11 o'clock because... Uh, <laughs> Don't wake up at <laughs> You must be a hard worker as a man because most of the things in the world are looking at us to say we are the providers. And then when you start to have a woman and then she wants certain things, it's not that she's being too much. You are a provider. You are supposed to provide. So you have to be a man that works hard in such a way that when somebody uh, is asking you to provide, if it's your wife, you are able to provide for your family. Oh, wife. The yes. Q word is wife. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> yes, I, I said wife. <laughs> <laughs> if it's your wife and then she wants you to provide, you are able to provide. And then one of the issues that made me to write that chapter is because when I go home, in Shandima, where I'm from. They, Shandima. Yes, yes. Okay. They are, they say, please stay with these rocks. Like there's just rocks next to the tar road. You find people are just sitting on top of those rocks. It's guys who are just sitting. And then you'll come back every day. Those guys are just sitting in that rock, talking and drinking. And then when you are passing there, they will stop you to say, hey, Percy, can you assist me with five rand, for example? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you realize, Uri, these people, it's like they are not having ambitions to, to do more and to want to be more. So that's why I wrote that chapter to say, as a man, you must be a, a visionary. Because even when a woman comes to your life, they say she's coming to be a help. So if somebody's becoming to be a help, you must be doing something because you cannot help somebody who's sleeping. That person must be waking towards some way and that you are coming to their life so that you help them to go there with ease. So that's why I wrote that chapter. And then again, I wrote about just being positive in life because sometimes people are not uh, as, uh, what do you call it? As focused, yes, focused. And as focused as they should be because... Uh, they're not positive. It's like you just have a negative mindset in such a way that you are the one even destroying your life in the way that you are. It's like you are still so worried about something that happened maybe 15 years ago. And then in your mind, that's all you think about. And then you are not being innovative and coming with ways to improve your life. So I touched a lot about the mindset because it's important to have a positive mindset if you want to win in life and then because your mind sets you for where you are going if you are going somewhere you first arrive there in your mind before you go there actually so it's important to have that positive mindset and then i also talk about wealth protection to say uh, we are building this wealth it's important to know how to protect it in terms of even when you get married to know which a uh, regime to use uh, when you oh, so when you get to get married you protect <laughs> you protect the world from from your spouse <laughs> no 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 so, some of those things are not even a uh, protecting you from that person they are protecting you guys together as a yeah. as a so family yes <laughs> so it's important to know so that's that's just a book uh, yeah so what what's the thing that keeps you motivated what do you do to, to keep yourself motivated and in the goal? In the goal. 
I think there's a lot of things uh, which I do. Obviously, I will start with the the church has been like the main thing to my life to see this is what keeps me very focused, very disciplined, very grounded. It's, it's, it's what keeps me grounded. And then again, uh, I'm not really out there. I'm not very outgoing. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with even just sitting in my house the whole weekend and not touch the kai keys. You sit in your house the whole weekend? I think what is keeping me busy now is this uh, information of uh, financial literacy. It's what makes me to go out a lot. Driving you? Yes. But before, I used to be very chilled and just uh, sitting in my house and comfortable without even worried. So I feel like it even makes me to save money easy because I'm able to manage my, my, my lifestyle because most of the time your lifestyle is what makes you not to be able to save because you've got this extreme lifestyle and then you've got this small salary which cannot afford <laughs> which cannot afford your so your lifestyle. The extreme <laughs> lifestyle and <laughs> small salary cannot afford. That's a good life. Yes. But so the extreme lifestyle the small salary so, that cannot so those, those are the issues which uh, most people are going through. So I feel like managing your finances, it's about managing yourself. So if a person comes to me and say, I cannot manage my finances. I feel like what they are telling me without telling me is that I cannot manage myself. So when you are giving them advices, it's more like you are helping them so that they can first manage themselves and it will be easy to manage your finances going forward. Because mm, if you're a person who goes out a lot, you know, yes. you're going to spend yes. money a lot because you're out a lot. Yes. But if you're home, yes. you spend less. <laughs> but don't you think people all, somebody... Yes. We all have our poison one way or another. Yes. F for someone, your poison, your poisonous <laughs> properties. Yes. Another guy, it's alcohol. Yes. Another guy, it's women. <laughs> so you must choose your poison. Please. Yeah. I, I think even if you have a poison, the when management becomes important and manage it, even if it's about going out, manage the way you go out. Do you manage, you manage yes. the way you go out? Because sometimes yes. it's just people who come to you and say, let's go out. It was not in your plans. You were just sitting. And then they, they then somebody just come to you on a Saturday and said, let's go to this place. And then you didn't even plan to spend money on that Saturday. But all of a sudden, there you are going without doing things which are in your plans. And then when I'm talking about plans, it make me to think about sale, for example. So for me, the word sale, it's sale if it is in my plans. Let's say, for example, I'm planning to buy my mother a dining table in December. Mm -hmm. And then I'm saving 2000 every month so that I can have uh, 22000 by November. And then in November, this is uh, Black Friday. Then I get that table for... 20,000, for example, that is sale because it is something which was in my plans. And it's saving you two. It's grand. saving me 2,000. But if I'm just walking uh, along the streets on a Black Friday and then I see somebody saying, I'm selling a table for 20,000, then I take my 20,000 and go and buy something that I don't really need. I just had that it's on sale. I just wasted 20,000. So it's, it becomes sale when it's part of your plan. So it's important that we do things that are in our plans, not just to hear a friend saying, let's do this, and then you are jumping and then you are doing it. It's important to control the way you do things by making sure that you do things that are planned. So that camera there is looking at you. Yes. And there's a young guy sitting somewhere saying, Percy, I hear you, but I didn't have the gift of mathematics or the gift of academics. Mm. I didn't become an engineer. I mean, you're a whole engineer, mm. right? Mm. But since you've spoken and I've heard you, mm. what would be your advice to me? Mm. What would you say to me? What would yeah. be your words to that young person? Yes. It could be a young person sitting somewhere discouraged. Mm. Could be a young person somewhere there in Venda. Yes. Yes. And and he's about to give up. Yes. And he's about to say, Yes. You, you said something that's quite powerful, Eli. You said mm. you can take someone and put him in your circumstances, and the person would say, mm. It's possible that a person can say, mm. My mother is just a clean. I don't even have to go to Vasit. Mm. But you were not like that. You, mm. you were more inclined to say, mm. 
the mere fact that my mother is a cleaner is the reason I must become bad. Mm. So what would you say to those young people, mm. especially since we're, in, we're about to vote on the 29th of May? Yes. Um, what would you say to them? First of all, I okay, if you see this episode after 29th, <laughs> 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 okay. yes, the first thing will be uh, to say the way you look at yourself. There is a picture I posted on social media where there was a guy uh, he was standing there looking very dirty, but he was looking uh, at himself on the mirror. And then he sees this person with a suit. Like he's, he's dirty, but when he's looking at the mirror, he's seeing somebody wearing a suit. So I think the first thing that I will say is to see yourself differently, to say this is where I want to go before you do anything. And then I can't say school is the only thing that makes people to make it in life. I feel like it's just being positive and then also going for what you want. Because there's a lot of people who are doing so well without going to school. Although school is very important and then it teaches you more about the topic. Like if you are into property, I went to school and studied engineering. So I will have an idea when I'm doing a project to say these people must not take advantage because I know one, two, three, four, five. So school is important, but you can still achieve your goals outside school. You just have to look at what you can do and then what are those things that you are good at. Because some people might just do something which they're gifted with to say, this is where my gift is. And then you use your gift and then you'll be able to open a lot of opportunities for yourself. Although I'm not saying people must not go to school. I feel like it's, it's important to go to school because for me, the biggest thing for me is the salary. I think the salary was part of my journey because it's how I use my salary to be where I am today. So for me, a salary is more like a seed, which I, I, I went in and say, I'm not going to eat my seed. I'm going to sow it so that I can invest in property and then property will make money. And then that money is what I will eat from it. So for me, uh, it's more like to say, uh, when you see somebody eating their fruits, there's this saying that say, when you eat somebody, see somebody eating their fruits, they must not make you to eat your seed. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you must still invest your seed and wait for your time. So we must be very patient as people because I feel like this generation now, it's, it's that generation that wants something to happen so quick. It's like if you are studying something, you want it to work today. You are not willing to wait and go through the journey properly. And then for us to reach, I've been doing this for 14 years. I've been saving for 14 years. So it's a journey that I went through. And then I was building a room by room to where I am. I even saw my property business overtaking my salary from the municipality when I was in this journey. Like it was more like a journey where it started and then I was earning, let's say for example, 60,000 at work. And then in property, I had nothing. Then the journey was continuing. I built my first property, it's making 26,000 a year. I'm earning 60,000 until it overtook. So we must be willing to go through that whole journey and, and then make sure that we are we are patient. We we are not a microwave generation. We we wait, and then uh, while you are waiting, you are positive and looking forward to say, "I will reach there." It might not be today, and then the fact that my neighbors are living like this, it doesn't mean I I won't get there. I will get there. I must just wait a little long. So what I can see to that young person is to say they must be positive, and then they must go for what they are good at. And then if uh, there is a chance for them to study, let them go and study and get the salary and use the salary to save it and make sure that you achieve your investment goal. Hey, uh, hey off. Mr. Pesisi? Yes. <laughs> you so no, may God keep on blessing you, enlarging your territory. I mean, you are accommodating families. And one thing we don't realize is that sometimes you don't know who you're accommodating. And who they are going to be in 20 years' time. Yes. So may we have the discernment yes. um, to take care of people as they support our businesses and occupy these units, the yes. many thousands of <laughs> units that you're going to be in. You know? yes. So guys, if you're not inspired by that, I hope you are inspired. 
Thank you yes. for tuning in to the Winner's Circle. We had Mr. Percy Singo, who is a property investor, an engineer, an author. I'm sitting with an <laughs> author, you know, who's an author as well. From me and my team to you, yes. broadcasting from the media shop in Bryanston, South Africa. It's more than just money. See you in the next episode. Ciao, ciao.